This is big work here. Simplify. Simplify for us, it always means in this in this in the context of these problems, get rid of exponents, combine like terms. Now, you remember what like terms are, right? So here you had asked me, how come we can combine the x squared with the y squared? Let's see if we can, if we can address that right now. So number one, suppose that I gave you 3x to the fifth times 2x to the fourth. So you have two monomials that you're going to multiply. When you multiply expressions of this kind, you multiply the coefficients together, and then you use the, the properties of exponents. So here I have 3 times 2 is an x to the fifth times x to the fourth. That would be this property right here. You have the same base, x, and you have two exponents. You're multiplying these two numbers. What do you do with the exponents? You add them up, so x to the Nine. Now there's no several terms to, to worry about, so that's that. That would be our expression simplify. Question at our, at our second. 3x to the fifth times 2x. Let's try that. So that's a good problem because even though you do not see you do not see uh, an exponent, there's an exponent there that you have to be aware of. So you multiply the coefficients, right? Yeah. 3 times 2 is? 6. 6. And what's the power of x now? 6. We five. have 5, and here a? One. a 1, and 5 plus 1 is? <coughs> 6. The number one mistake students make here is that somehow they, 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 they want to multiply, like 5 times 1 is 5. Is that a multiplication? You add the exponent, x to the 6. 3x to the fifth <coughs> times 2x squared to the third. Now here you have a combination of this property and this property. Let's just follow order of operations, see what you think you should do in what order. Question. Should I multiply 3 times 2 and then x to the fifth times x to the second, and then do the exponent? No. no. Before multiplication, order of operation says, what do we do? Exponent. exponent. So I got to take care of that exponent. So let me start with that. It's still apply like PEMDAS? x to the fifth. That's right. That, that, that applies. PEMDAS, no. All right. So now we're going to say here, by this property right here, everything in parentheses has to be raised to the, to the third power. So you're going to say, now I'm going to write this, you don't have to write this step if you feel comfortable just um, um, writing the answer. This would be 2 to the third times x squared to the third. That's what you're doing. You're raising the 2 to the third power and the x squared to the third power. You don't have to write this step if you don't want to. That would be okay. All right, what is 2 to the third power? Eight. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. What is x squared times x to the third? X to the? Is it fifth or sixth? What do we do when we raise? We raise the power to a power, that'll be this one here. You multiply the exponents, so this is 6. And the activity, you review why. We've already done this, but in the activity, the author Walks you through. Why is it that you multiply in this case? It should should make sense. Now that we don't have any more parentheses here, can I multiply this? No. Yes. That's right. They don't have to be like terms to be multiplied. To add them, they have to be like terms. For multiplying, don't it, you, you don't have to have like terms. So three times eight. What is x to the fifth times x to the sixth? X to the. 11. 11. This will take a little practice, and that's why I put 30 problems of these on the, you know, that, that you, you practice. 
there's not 30 of these, but you know, four or five. You need to practice this rule so that there's no confusion. Of, there will be a time you don't want to be second guessing yourself on these. All right, now let's do a slightly more interesting problem. All of these have worked with monomials. Now, let's see what you think you would do for a problem like this. 2x times x squared minus 3x plus 2 minus 3 times x squared plus 5. Let's say that I give you this problem and I ask you to simplify. You're going to get rid of parentheses and you're going to uh, combine like terms. We're going to do this one here. If it helps you, you know, there's no harm in you putting a 1 here and a 1 right here so that you know that those are the exponents on x. If, you, if you're, that's clear in your mind, you don't have to write. Let's multiply. We need to multiply here, here, here. We call that the distributing problem. What is 2x times x squared? 2x to the third power, or x cubed, uh-huh, very nice. I have 2x times negative 3x. 2 times negative 3? x times x? 6. 6x squared. 6x squared, okay. So don't forget your minus sign right here. And then you have 2x times 2. <laughs> 2 times 2 is 4, and then we just have that 1x, so this would be 4x. Do I need parentheses? No. Not anymore. Once I distribute that 2x, the parentheses are gone. Now let me distribute this negative 3 by multiplying it times everything that's in here. Negative 3x squared minus 2x. Negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared, and negative 3 times 5? negative 15. Now you got rid of the parentheses. Now you're going to look at, at um, you can combine like terms. At like terms. Now here's something I didn't tell you. I, I failed to mention this. This is in the activity. You pick it up, but I'll, I'll give it to you right now. You always write polynomials in what we call standard form. Always write the highest powers of x first. Write the yes. powers of x in descending order. Always write polynomials in descending powers of x. We call this standard form. Okay? So let's do that. What you do is you say, what's the highest power of x you see here? Three. Three. Now, underline that and then find any other term that has an x3 in it. Anything? No. No, no then we write 2x cubed. That's it. Then you just go in order. After 3 would be x to the second. second. Let's see. I have an x to the second here and an x to the second here. All I need to do is combine the coefficients carefully looking at the signs. Negative 6 and negative 3. Negative 9. X squared. X squared. We're just combining now. We don't change the exponents anymore. We're just putting them together. We have the x cubes. Now here are the x squares. Now I need x. There's an x. Uh, no more x's. That's it. So I'm going to say here. Plus 4x. Plus 4x. Minus 15. This would be. That's it. Imagine that I gave you a problem like this and I ask you to simplify. What you need to ask yourself is this. Well, first, deal with the numbers the way you would in an arithmetic class. 3 over 6, what does that simplify to? 1 third. 1 half. One half. Now, 2 is 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 6 two, two times. That you, you should know how to do, right? Now, when you're going to apply this rule, um, the, the question that Jackie was asking before was, was a, a, a valid question. Here, she said, what if I do n minus m? How do you know if you should subtract the n from the m or, or, or vice versa? You look at the, the one, the, the x that has the, the, the highest power. In other words, how many factors of x do we have in the numerator? Five. five. x times x times x times x. Five times. 
How many on the bottom? Three. Three. When we cancel what we can, where are there going to be x's left over? On the top. On the top. How many? Two. You subtract. That's when you do the subtract. 5 minus 3 is 2. So you can cross this out and say, I'm going to have an x squared left here and nothing on the bottom. So what's your final answer? 1 times x squared? x squared over? Two. Over 2. Now that's, that's OK. But in your book, that may be written as 1 half x squared. In other words, so that you can see the coefficient in front of the x squared. Either one, I will accept either one. I just want you to know that there's different ways of writing this. Now, here's the last example that I'm going to do, which is going to be factor out the GCF. We've done this before, but I want to remind you with polynomials, it works exactly the same way. We're going to have a single variable here. I'm going to give you prompts, and all you have to do is factor out the GCF, nothing more than that. If I write, for example, 18x to the fifth plus 9x to the fourth minus 27x to the third. And I ask you to find the GCF. Don't call the answer out loud. For some of you, this jumps at you like, you know, like your name. What's your name? You don't have to think about it. It just sits there. But, but for many of us, it's not so obvious. So write it down, and then in a moment, we'll, we'll discuss. But if you see that it's 9, you would just write the 9 out here. 9 is the GCF. Now let's look at the powers of x. What is the highest power that we can pull out from all of these guys? Five. x to the what? Three. So someone said 5 because that's a, the highest power. But I couldn't pull out an x to the fifth from here. I don't have enough x's. So the most I can pull out is the smallest power of x present here, which is x to the third. I can pull out three factors of x from here, three factors of x from here, and three factors of x from here. That's what they have in common, x to the third power. And what remains is just asking yourself, what do I multiply times this common factor in order to get back my original polynomial? All right. 9 goes into 18 how many times? What do I need to multiply times x cubed to get x to the fifth? x squared. Um, 9 goes into 9. 1. I need a 1, so I'm not going to write the 1. What do I multiply times x to get x to the fourth? 1x. If you write 1x, not a problem. It's just typically not written down when it's a coefficient. And then minus, how many times can 9 go into 27? 3. And, uh, what do I need to multiply times x cubed to get x cubed? I don't need any x's. Now here's how you know that you've done this correctly. Check. One, you multiply this out, and you should, you should have the polynomial that you have right here. But more importantly, because that, that's probably going to work out, you must check the three terms, in, or the terms in the parentheses here, and double check that there's nothing they have in common. Do these three terms have anything in common? No. Other than one, we couldn't factor anything else. This is what I mean. Let me just very quickly revisit.